I don't think I was aware that this was a phenomenon at the time. Nethermind uh, started off as a group of eight artists. We had four shows over a period of five years. From 1991 was our first show, 1995 was our last show. Well, we both had just recently graduated from York University. At the time, there wasn't you know, a lot of sculpture being shown in Toronto. It was I think, mainly photo text work at the yeah. time. There were very few galleries, and the galleries were kind of intimidating. I remember going to an opening at Mercer and feeling like I didn't belong there, and there was no room for uh, anyone new inside this, this um, established order. We'd been really influenced by Grace Hopper, New City of Sculpture. We'd seen spontaneous combustion, but we didn't really know the circle of artists. Of it started getting really big, so we gathered together a small group of friends and got a space donated at 401 Richmond, and that kind of led us to realize that we could do it ourselves. Both of us were studio assistants for Renee Van Elm and Judith Schwartz. I think it was Renee who said, Why don't you include some senior artists? And then we immediately thought of Reinhard Reitzenstein and Tom Dean, you know, were really important to how we conceived of our work. We approached Reinhard, who is an incredibly generous, outgoing person, and he immediately said yes. And he actually convinced Tom. They were the reason that we got reviews in that very first show. session was wonderful for us because it opened up spaces. We did consciously look for spaces that had a strong character. The first thing we looked for was industrial basements because we thought that was like the subconscious of the building. And then we even had big debates about whether to sweep or not. Because it was like, how much of the space was actually in its dirt? Like, how much of the atmosphere? I think each artist responded to it differently. If their work was very labor intensive, they started, but then they became site responsive. They chose the best spot, they altered it accordingly. You could have like a big disaster and it, you know, it doesn't, you don't get sued by the land. And you could basically drill a hole anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I made these big fabric vessels, uh, sewn canvas, rubberized, and they're filled with water and they're hanging right in front of the freight elevator. And so they're the holes, huge, they weigh yeah, hundreds of pounds. Well, yeah, the biggest one weighed 800 pounds. I didn't want to use airline cable because it's silver, so I used black annealed wire and just kind of wrapped it around a pipe. So everyone had to go through this space and kind of come in contact with these big hanging Which balls. was part of the point of the yeah, piece because they, they were really flashy. And tactile, I wanted them to be touched. But through all that moving, um, I guess the, the pipe acted kind of like a pulley and it started to unravel the wire. So the medium-sized ball kind of dropped, hit the ground, it kind of flopped over and went glug, 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 and glug, and all the water ran the down the freight elevator. <laughs> But luckily, um, a couple of people had their wits about them, kind of grabbed the neck and held it up. And I went and got a ladder and just kind of wired it up so it was kind of sitting on the floor in a, in a lump. <laughs> the third Nethermind show, the posters, became so popular for people to steal that we had to keep reposting. They were on tar paper done with spray paint and a stencil. We couldn't keep them on the walls because everybody was collecting them. Well, the fourth Nethermind opening was Mammoth. There's no expectations about how you're supposed to react to these artworks. And you'd wander through the space and actually have to go and look for the artworks amongst the space. So I think it became very interactive for the viewer. The way that, you know, the collective um, structures, how we established it, it's, it's easy to invite new people, but it's hard to fire people. 
<laughs> it seemed kind of nasty to you know have a meeting and say who votes that that person gets kicked out. You know? <laughs> and once all of us had like you know four shows on the go each year beyond the collective, it got harder and harder. 